Listen here, all you sexy moms, moms to be, want to be moms, and all you ladies that came for moms. This fucking commercial's for you. Tired of waiting for those dipshits to catch the hint? Tired of walking around with an average butt? Well, guess what? The boys at Mind Pump don't want you to settle for that flat ass. That's why we created the Butt Builder Guide and Bundle. It includes Matt's Red and Matt's Black, six months of expert programming, and a guide to make sure you build a tight ass. So for this Mother's Day, we're hooking you mamas up. Half off the Butt Builder program for Saturday and Sunday only, so hurry up and head over to mindpumpmedia.com and click the big pink button oh shit yeah Hold that up. minivan so we should okay uh, so minivan, so we're doing we're doing the butt builder bundle yeah which includes maps anabolic and maps Black. and maps aesthetic yeah which is uh, it's already discounted it already takes both programs yeah. disc and adds a mod by the way there's a modification in there where we teach you how to get your glutes to fire so that you can build your butt but in reality it's also both of our most popular programs discounted and we're going to cut that already discounted price in half? In half. But you know, and I said Saturday and Sunday, but Doug says we're going to launch this. As so soon as soon as, as goes, this airs? As soon as this airs, it goes live, we're going to run it all the way through. This is the first time we've ever taken a ever bundle. Ever done that. It's we've, for all these mamas. This is a flash yeah. sale. We've never done a 50% off bundle. Yep. That's crazy. Yep. So what is, what's the price going to be, Doug? What does that come out to? Well, it's like 190 bucks normally, and so it's going to drop it down. Yeah, it's going to drop it down to under $100. It's like $98 for both maps programs plus the mod. Mm, How does that make you feel, Doug? Very nervous. <laughs> Uh, this is, I'm not exaggerating, this is by far the biggest discount we've ever done. Yeah. It's a 50% off two program hey, bundle. It's Mother's Day. It's available yeah. right now until Sunday at mindpumpmedia.com. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your mom. We appreciate you and that ass. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts. Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. I'm going to push some limits today, just so you guys know. So, push it to just a little, limit. just a little heads up. I'm going to, you know, so, yeah. I'm going to make, I'm going to make Justin do this face a couple times. He goes, this one. He goes, ah, like, fuck, <laughs> where are we going? Like he's taking a shit. Justin gets it when Justin's when I say shit that makes him nervous. It looks like he's going to take a shit. Oh, you've noticed yeah. that, yeah. And Sal, and Sal does this like. Do you know why? Does he think he's going like, we're going to have to delete that. Do you know why You know why Justin looks like he's going to take a shit when that happens? Because he is. <laughs> yeah. It does make him need to it, shit himself. It starts processing like immediately. No, I'm, I'm, I don't. What face do I make? I'm kind of like. You You do this here like. Here we go. Just, yeah, exactly. It's like this. <sighs> fucking out. No, you get like a smile and then your eyes kind of go up like. <sighs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It, yeah, it's because it's, it's like, you know what it is. Ah, Sal, like you get excited. Kind of. Sal's like conflicted about it. When yeah. I say stuff that's over, like there's a, he's like, I agree with this motherfucker, and he's yeah. like, I don't he's know like, if we should he's say saying this. Saying it, but <laughs> yeah. well, we're both we're, let it fly. We're both controversial, but in different ways. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'll be controversial with like. So you really think that your diet recommendations are healthy? Like that <laughs> kind of controversy. <laughs> Adam's controversy is like. You're an idiot. Do you have rape fantasies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like shit like that. Yeah. I, I'm not pulling one out of my ass, by the way. Like, <laughs> that's a real that's a real thing yeah. to say. Uh, there's like so many records that skip in yeah. my brain. Yeah. Like, uh, hello, oh. uh, Miss uh, Doctor So and So. Do you um who are you dating? Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> Speaking Adam, of doctors, do you like anal sex? Uh, <laughs> Speaking like, of doctors, whoa. you're out there picking fights with doctors again. I see you. Oh God, I see you this damn morning, it, dude. I love his response. You're dumb. How about the, Who's, like, the that, that's his comeback? Yeah, the no. irony, the, the irony of, of uh, it's so great, right? I, and I knew it as soon as I saw Sal respond and him go back and forth. And I see him firing back and he's like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> right? And, and I know who it is and I don't want him to, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to tell him. I want him to keep going. And oh, you don't get, know who it is yet? Yeah, oh, he, I, I, so I, I told him when he got oh, here. He yeah, oh, okay. I told him when he got here. I said, oh, by the way, that's yeah. the that's the doctor that reached out to us that wanted to become our virtual doctor. <laughs> and we were like, no, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Well, it's such an it's such a irresponsible fucking post, and the only reason why I even commented on it was because he had doctor in his title. And yeah, look, I'll tell you what: if you're a fitness idiot, uh, you know, like your typical Instagram fitness idiot, and you make and you make stupid memes and you post stupid stuff, we expect that. Whatever, yeah. I'm not going to say anything unless you have a massive following, because then I feel like it's my responsibility. But when you use your PhD, but it says you know to try and fucking sound smart but about shit that you don't know about. It says doctor in the title. And it, the meme is how protein shakes help with weight loss. And it's got these two comparative, like, potential diets. <laughs> okay, so this, this, let me just read okay. this to you. Or just I feel like I saw that in the 90s. It's, 
So it's like two comparable diets, right? The first one has sensible breakfast and then a burger, fries, and soda for lunch and then sensible dinner. The <laughs> second one says sensible breakfast, protein shake, sensible dinner. Oh, wow, you'll lose weight with the, with the second option. And it's like, okay, that's like me making a meme like, here's fire, put your hand in fire, it burns. Like, no shit. <laughs> this, is the, this is the Slim Fast model. Remember Slim yeah. Fast? Yes. Yeah. Back fast. in the 80s and 90s? And then it became Shakeology- Fuck. And then, you know, it just gets repackaged and repurposed. So I'm just like, listen, dude, I told him, like, are you really trying to say, like, protein shakes are great meal replacement? Like, that's what people yeah. should do. It's slightly better than eating shitty food, but Nutri-fast. is it really? And is it long term? And he's, I guess he's an obesity specialist. And I, and he's like, you, you should come see the data. I'm like, yeah, people, people are going to fucking lose weight when you cut their calories. Nobody, nobody's <laughs> debating that, you moron. But let's look at the long term success of this. Like, all of your super obese patients that you put on there's these fucking shakes. Well, let's see them five years from now. This is what's wrong. Yeah. I was just having this conversation with uh, Taylor. I was kind of giving. He was asking me like, "Hey, you know, I just every, the more he's learning about Paul Check, he's just like, man, this guy's so awesome. He's so smart. You know, what is it?" And I'm like, "Well, here's the irony, right? I was like, I don't even know if the guy finished high school. I said he's completely self taught, but what he did different than what most people do here in America is." He's not specialized in just one part of the body. Like, that's what happens here. Like, you become this specialist in an area, and that's all your hyper. Now, there's pluses to that, right? Because you spent eight years of schooling and all your studying and all your research in this area or part of a body or a But sing- stay in your lane. Yeah, well, it's a single topic, right? Well, even that, <laughs> yeah. here's the problem with that. Like, you get someone like this who's an obesity specialist. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, that means that all you study is people that are, are obese overweight right that have these eating problems and then you put a study together like what sal's talking about where you replace a meal with a, a protein shake like no fucking shit they're gonna can lose I, can weight. I tell you something? you're not addressing the psychological issues that no, these people not at all no not at all you're not addressing the, and let's be honest that's where the the real root cause is there it's not in their calories their calories is just a part of the problem the real problem starts with them inside and what's going on in their fucking well head. do you know how many people i've worked with how many times i've had clients come to me who have gone to doctors like this and lost, you know, oh, I lost 80 pounds. I lost, you know, 90 pounds. And the way they lost the weight was almost every single time the doctor took food away mm-hmm. and replaced it with shakes so, and bars. With shakes yeah. and bars. Yeah. This by the this is the protocol that 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 western medicine has had now for awful for oh, decades. Every single obesity clinic it's, does this. Every single one and are you going to get short-term weight loss? Of course, that's so stupid. Nobody's going to debate that. Yeah. But is it Working? Well, no. We've had convenient, low-calorie meals available to us. Frozen meals forever. Jenny Craig has done this forever, right? We've had these forever, and people are still getting sicker and fatter. And let's let's also look at these protein shakes for a second. I, you know, I I hate constantly hammering on supplements, but I, I have to do it, right? Yeah. It doesn't get more processed than a protein powder. It does. Even the most processed microwave dinner that you buy at the grocery store that you pull out of the freezer is less and processed. you pop in the microwave <laughs> and it heats it up and now you've got Salisbury steak, you know, broccoli and there's gravy or whatever. Oh my God, Salisbury steak. Remember that? <laughs> it's a, that's a real TV dinner. That's a right? real TV. <laughs> yeah. That, hungry Man. What is a Salisbury steak? Fuck, remember, remember Hungry Man? What is a Salisbury steak? I've never, I, I had, it in, I've never had it in a restaurant. It's, I've never, it's the shittiest I'm cut on the, 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 next on the time left I'm ass cheek. Like a really of a, nice steakhouse. I think it's a step like above spam. Yeah. But anyway... That is less processed than a powder that has a cre- incredibly long shelf life that tastes like cookies and cream that you <laughs> stir in water and poof, yeah. you have you know, protein and calories or whatever in there. It doesn't get more processed than that. You've literally taken food yeah. and turned it into a, a powder. How, do, how can you get anything more processed than that? And these people are using that as a replacement for food and telling people this is a great way to lose weight. It's not, dude. I'm yeah. sorry. No. And the fact that you're a doctor and you're promoting this makes me angry. Well, yeah. and, he, and here's the thing. And I, and I know he's younger. I know he's younger than we it's are. It's an so old-ass what, bar, like, what irrit- dinosaur method. I, I was reading the, him going back and forth. And what really irritates me is for him to be so naive, to say some shit that he's got more experience with obese people because you because you went through school for this and then now you have your clinic. 
Like you're taught, you're arguing with somebody who's 38 years old, who's got 20 years of training people and it will be, how many obese people do you think you've had sit in front of you over the, the last 20 fucking years? Like get the fuck out of here, bro. I don't care if you've been holding <laughs> classrooms full of fat people for the yeah, last, bro. for the last four <laughs> years, you're not going to, you're not going to have put the time into what it, what, and see how many of those people you help. And it, let's be honest, right? How many of these people did we help that way originally? I'll be all. That's what I did. I, that's why I'm so uh, angry about it's, it. Yeah, that's what we were taught. It's like, yeah, I, I did the same thing. I put somebody on some low calorie diet, evolved. ran the fuck out of them for six months. They lost 60 pounds. We high fived each other. They went along their way. They came back. I saw them two years later and they were fatter than what they were when I got them. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, and that was the, well, that was a common theme with these obese people. Cause I wasn't really helping them. It's not real life. You're not, you're not addressing the root cause, yeah. right? That's everything that we've been talking about is the root cause, root cause of stuff, it starts in their head. You're not teaching them anything. No. You know, they're, they're not learning anything. All they're all they're doing is is they're following this protocol. And then once it ends, how do you transition from there to real life situations where you're at somebody's you, house, you have to make decisions? Like they just don't address any of that. Here's where shakes uh like that come can can come into play when there's when you re- require emergency intervention. Okay. So and this is what he this is what he's dealing with, or this is what he's trained to deal with. If I'm an obesity specialist, right? I'm a doctor that deals with obesity. I'm trained to deal with people who come to me who are at risk of dying. Like this, this is here's you know 450 pound Mrs. Johnson or Mr. Johnson, and we need emergency intervention because their diabetes is out of control. Mm -hmm. They can't breathe. They can barely move. Like their quality of life is horrible. And if we don't do something now, the person's risk of dying is quite high over the next five years. Mm -hmm. So. Here, I tell you what we're going to do. Let's do this emergency intervention because we need to do this right now. But at the same time, let's deal with the root cause. But see, they don't do that. It's about emergency intervention. You lost the weight. Awesome job. Everything, you're healed. Uh, you know, you can leave my office now. Now let's go with the next one. Because he keeps telling me like, you got to look at the data. Come look at my data. <laughs> no shit, dude. Like that's so stupid. Yeah. It's obvious. I could take a room full of obese people and have them replace two of their three meals with shakes. And if they if they comply, they're all going to lose weight. We're going to see improvements in blood lipid levels. We're going to see improvements in lots of different things. But does anybody really believe that that's solving the problem at all? And, and let's look at the long-term data. It just doesn't fucking work. If it did, that would be the cure. It would yeah. be, it would have worked by now. Right. We've got the science, right? We've got the process. <laughs> yeah, this has been a thing since the 80s, it's for the, sure. It's the biggest loser mentality. That's what it is. It's the yeah. biggest loser mentality. Starve them, overwork them, lose to 60 to 100 and something oh pounds. God. High five, see you later. Yeah. Like, sorry. We'll that, bring them down to like 800, 900 calories, you know, yes. but it's managed by oh. a physician. Yeah, cool. And I'll, and I'll tell you what, here's 100%. <laughs> That you'll find uh, accurate almost every single time. And I asked him this question. He has yet to answer, but we'll see what is. I'll be shocked if if he's not affiliated with some protein powder or meal <laughs> replacement company. I'll be shocked. Now, it could be possible. He could be like, oh, no, I have no affiliation. But I doubt it. I'm pretty sure there's a company he's affiliated with that he, promote, that he, he profits off of promoting the irony the company that he works for reached out to us to work with us and that's why i thought it was really comical that's the only reason it why he was funny a, he yeah. was attached to you and why you were following him was because i was wondering he why popped he... up in your feed <laughs> you got to be careful like i've learned that now right like i've learned not to like fire at someone if they pop in my feed because i'm following them for a reason <laughs> it means they're connected to me somehow or some way no it's just so a... the reason why you have them in your feed is because when they first approached us and they wanted to become our <laughs> official um, yeah medical doctor on uh on virtual like a virtual well, doctor it's good we know that now right yeah well i remember we weren't impressed in the first place i yeah, remember we going through his stuff and i was just like nah i'm cool it was like, gonna be is- like this one guy to handle like all of our you know influx of people yeah, yeah. that wasn't gonna work I, well and here's the thing to stay in your lane dude man i just i think you giving if you're an obesity specialist then speak to just the obese people not the masses that are that are tuning into your page because and like sal said if it's an emergency like like somebody is 400 something pounds doctor says hey you could die in six months if you don't start losing this weight <laughs> totally get it that's why i get the gastric bypass for that reason sure like i understand yeah. i mean if it's life or death like hey you're gonna die because you're so overweight then yeah that makes a lot of sense and then then we'll address the psychological stuff afterwards because we have an emergency right now we're you're literally going to kill yourself the way you're eating and let's fix that but you're just right now by teaching someone to put it have a shake instead of a meal 
And and that's how you're presenting it is with, on a picture with fucking French fries and a burger, and yeah. you know skip your second meal of French fries and a burger and have a shake instead is awful. It is. It's just like slim fast type of mentality, mm-hmm. and you're not helping. You're not helping the real problem. I remember I had a we had a client once that came to uh, our, our gym years ago. Uh, this lady who rec- she needed an emergency intervention uh, gastric bypass, and so she got it. And she ended up losing about 120 pounds, which is a tremendous, tremendous amount of weight. She, you know, she had to get surgery afterwards wow. to remove all the excess skin and all that stuff. She lost it all fast, huh? Uh, she, well, of course, right? You, you, you remove a person's stomach. Yeah. Um, and uh, by the way, I mean, it's not an easy answer. I, I, I want to be clear here. I think a lot of times people, especially in fitness, think, oh, that's the easy way out. Like, it's kind of not. It's a difficult process. The person has all kinds of issues afterwards. They have to take special nutrients and supplements because they've dramatically reduced their ability to absorb nutrients. So I feel for people in this situation, but I've seen this particular cycle happen uh, time and time again. And this this woman uh, illustrated it. I mean, she, she lost the weight, 120 pounds. She got the skin surgery, removed all the skin. And over the course of the following eight years, she gained slowly started gaining it back. I mean, she would come into work out in the morning and she'd show up about 20 minutes early before her session. She'd sit in her car and she would eat uh, Jack in the Box every single morning. She would eat Jack in the Box. Then when she would use the restroom, she would destroy the restroom. I mean, destroy it to the point where you'd have to open the front door to get air circulating. Now, her gut issues were 100% connected to her gastric bypass and the fact that she never fixed any of her nutrition. She just continued to eat incredibly horrible. Now, she was severely limited in terms of how much she could eat at one sitting. So the way she dealt with it is she ate shitty food all the time, a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. And over the course of the years, she stretched that small pouch of a stomach that was left out considerably to the point where of the 120 pounds that she lost, she had, the last I saw her, she had gained probably half of it back and was on her way to getting it all back. And... You know, I mean, I get it. It's a, I mean, obviously there's an incredible challenge that that person is having. I completely understand that. But uh, I think uh, we're not giving these people the right tools and the right answers. And we're not being honest with them and helping them in the right way because uh, it's just not, we're not dealing with it. In fact, I believe she became, uh, started having problems with alcohol afterwards as a result because she she had lost her her drug, which was food. And that's an extreme case, of course, but... Uh, you know, when I, like I said, this morning was a perfect storm. I was a little bit of, I was in a bad mood already. I'm going through Instagram. I see this fucking stupid post about, you know, here's how a protein shake can replace a meal and make you lose weight. And then I look at the guy's name and I'm like, Dr. So-and-so. And I'm like, oh man, today's not your, today's not your day, buddy. <laughs> well, I'm going to come out the say buzz saw. Well, and I think that's, and I you you didn't just totally come right after him. I think you, I don't remember how you started the conversation, but. Maybe you did. I don't know if you if you jabbed him right out the gates or you just asked a, a question to see how. Because typically you do that. Normally when, you, when you're when you trying to uh, get after someone like that, you still don't attack. You normally just ask a question well, that's, thought, that's thought-provoking to see how he responds. Let's see. Oh, okay. So here's my first. I did kind of jab. Here was my very first comment. This is stupid. Oh, <laughs> just, oh God. Just the, <laughs> you were in a bad mood, bro. Yeah. Just I'm, trying to get yeah. your bag right there. You were obviously yeah. in a bad yeah. mood. No wonder he called you dumb. I said, this is stupid. Just eat real food. Protein shakes are about as processed as food can get. Horrible advice. His response, you're dumb. And then I went off. <laughs> then I went off. Hey, man. Sorry. Uh, I, sorry, not sorry. Well, uh, yeah, I was going to say, we we tend to have a shorter fuse for people that put doctor in front of their title. You know, if you're going to put that doctor in front of your title, then you start advising people. Well, his advice is no different than the, than the you know, the fitness, uh, you know, guys and girls who are selling supplements. There's, there's no different. No, no. It's I, exactly the same. I have more patience for them, though. I have more patience for them because I feel like they yeah. just don't know, you know. I don't, I don't, I think that... You know, someone like him who's been through all the schooling, reps himself like that, talks like yeah. that. Like and it and you gotta know when you're in that position. It's the same thing like us, okay? Like, for example, <clears throat> we now know that we are in this position. We've now have a ton of people that are connected to us that look to us for advice. So I, I'm very careful and I think we all are very careful to check each other yeah. on how we advise and we talk about things. An example of that was when we went through the whole ketogenic process and we're, we're raving about all the things that we enjoyed about it but then also we're very careful to say hey listen we are not saying this is the diet for everybody we're just sharing with you some of the experience mm-hmm. and so 
I, there's a responsibility that comes with this power. So when you get to the point where you've got you you've got this doctor in front of your name, or you've got a ton of people that are listening to you and looking to you for advice. I, I feel that you have some responsibility to to have some checks and balances. Well, I think people yeah. should. You need to understand that it's integrity. Uh, yes, education and experience do not mean you have integrity. They don't. In fact, some of the worst integrity you will find in the world are come from the most educated, most powerful people in the world. Like. Politicians are typically very, very educated, horrible integrity. Lawyers, there's a lot of doctors, researchers. You know how many scientific studies are just you can't replicate them. You you copy their their everything they do and it doesn't replicate. And it's obviously because there was an incredible bias or lack of integrity on the part of the researchers who are trying to, you know, squeeze out some kind of result or tweak the you know, the numbers to look a particular way so that they could satisfy their sponsors or whoever, mm. you know, whatever companies or whatever sponsoring the study. Um, it's shitty. It sucks, but that's the world we live in. Well, I feel, I feel it's lazy. I feel that he, what, what he's promoting is, uh, one of the laziest ideas, uh, to lose weight. It's the equivalent to me of like somebody coming in and me just hammering them. So they get like a crazy sweat out of it and they get super sore and then they come back and then I just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Because, like, by math, you know, we're burning X amount of calories, and that's all we're concerned about. Oh, so it, they're, they're not learning anything. Oh, it'd be awesome if the the obesity epidemic was simply a math equation that we just needed to figure out. I mean, yeah. that'd be awesome. It'd be so great if it, it was just... It would have been fixed by now. Yeah, if it was just an algebra equation that we had to put together, and you had the answer, and this is it, was, you know, subtracting the calories. Like, oh my God, are you serious? Yeah. That's all we had to do? <laughs> like, why isn't everybody fixing? It's yeah. not that simple, you know, yeah. so... Not at all. Bring on the fucking bird. Step right up, all you bearded men and all you bearded ladies. This quad is brought to you by Big Top Beard Company, whose all-natural beard oil products not only make your beard smell amazing, but feel amazing, too. Their organic essential oil blends transport you to manly places like the mountains, the desert, the sea, and beyond, all while encouraging a lot of beard nuzzling to boot. Mm. Buy it for yourself or as a gift for that special bearded someone at BigTopBeardCompany.com. Enter the discount code Mind Pump for 33% off at checkout. First question is from one A one V. How relevant do you believe steroids really are in major professional sports? Mm. Steroids are extremely. Ooh. I think they're extremely they're relevant. Prevalent, that's yeah, for say, sure. Prevalent or relevant are two different things. Well, I think, I, I, I think it's part of the protocol for for most, uh, depending on the sport. But most major sports, it's just part of the. It's as relevant as, or it's not as relevant, but it's in the similar category of proper training and proper nutrition. They look at it the same way. So if you're a top mm-hmm. athlete, especially if you want to compete at a very high level. And you get to that level, and now you're competing with a bunch of genetically, uh, you know, gifted individuals who all also have uh, a high workout. Because when you get to the pro level, you have genetic anomalies who all have a high work ethic, mm-hmm. uh, a high level of work ethic, and all have good training and good nutrition. So when you have all those pieces, you add steroids into the mix, and it's just part of the, the formula for many of them. I do want to share something though with my you know, talk about having, uh, being, uh, or having integrity and sharing our, you know, like some of the things that shattered my paradigm was my buddies and I, so we're all, I mean, we're all big sports fans and my two best friends that I grew up with, like that's, that's like one of the things that we have most in common. We all played sports growing up together. We all follow professional sports. Um, I've had the opportunity to train professional athletes, to be around them a lot, uh, later on in my fitness career. Now, when I was younger, I used to always debate to my buddies. My buddies are, they have different professions. One of them's a principal, the other one's a physical therapist. And, you know, I had more interaction with these professional athletes. And I used to say to them all the time that everybody, they're all on steroids. I'm like, when you see them and you see the level that they perform at, they're all on steroids. And that's really a, the major thing that separates the professional athlete and everybody else. Now, where my, my paradigm was shattered, and it was more recent when this happened because I have been around more professional athletes in the last five years than I have my previous 10. And on top of that, I remember watching that Ted talk that was really powerful Mm -hmm. for me. And I had never seen those stats before on how the, how sports have evolved um, from the science of 
the shoes, the yeah, turf, the the, turf, yeah. the, the pools, the, the way they're designed, that they swim in, the caps, and like how, what a difference. And there's the also spandex, the, the, like all that the, what they call the democratization of sports where yes. athletes became very specialized, where yeah. basketball players got real tall. And if you look at football is a great example. Football is probably the best example of any sport you can get where you can clearly see uh, specialization in positions yeah. where yeah. a lineman looks totally different than a cornerback, You're completely different. So and it's like they're born for that. So these things, these, all this started happening right at the same time. I started coming, I came across that TED talk, and then I started putting more and more of this together. And then I actually got some of my my closer friends, like you know uh, Eric Frampton and and Brendan Abendejo. Like these guys are all natural. You know, been in we're in the league for 13 plus years. People like Navarro Bowman, a lot. Some of these guys are actually all natural athletes, and I know that because they're friends of mine. I've had chances to talk to them, like you know, and, and share about it. Like I was genuinely curious, like you know, did you get? And they're like, no. Some of these dudes, and that's where the genetic piece. Re I realize, like, well, they're just yeah. a majority. Well, it's the one percent, you know, yeah. like, that, that that make it even to that level. It's like so, ridiculous. So I've now changed my whole theory on professional athletes and steroids and that is most of them actually are fucking genetic anomalies and that's what really separates them at the mm. professional level and they were on that course as young kids all the way to there now there is a, a, a high majority too that are that have dabbled in steroids and stuff like that well but there's always the temptation even though they have that gift they're competing with somebody like they've always killed it right so go, growing up like in all the sports everybody was they pretty much dominated everybody. Now all of a sudden they're in, in an arena where everybody's just about equal. Yeah. So every little incremental performance gain is so valuable to them. So the temptation for it's even greater. You know where I see the 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 benefit of anabolic steroids for professional athletes? Recovery. In, yeah. And helping them hundred percent. And yeah. helping them, especially as they age. I so actually think they use I think they yeah. use more anabolics. Um, for that are geared towards recovery mm -hmm. than I actually do. Before I used to think like everyone's hopped up on testosterone and growth hormone, yeah. and that's they just grow to be these huge humans yeah. because of all the shit that they're taking. And now knowing what I know now, I go, what, you know, I don't think that at all. I think they're well, using here how they train. They train specifically just to to uh, last, you know, that's to, it. to yeah promote longevity in their career. It's not about you know gaining like this extra mass, you know, to to yeah. dominate. That's well, people not the plan. people don't realize like these sports are real extreme uh, in terms of the damage they cause to the body. Even a, even a, a sport like basketball, which you don't think it's like football, right? But these guys, the, the way that they're playing and running uh, on a consistent level at that level uh, that they're playing at that professional level, and, and the size of these guys. I mean, here's the other thing you want to consider. We're talking about genetic anomalies. Like when you watch basketball, you watch a basketball game, right? You're looking at a bunch of dudes who are six, eight and up, right? And a lot of them are seven feet and up, right? Massive humans. Now think about your everyday life. Yeah. How, how many often do you see a seven foot? <laughs> how many times in your life have you truly like seen someone twice, maybe. that's seven feet tall and, uh, and, and excluding actually going to a basketball game? I can remember uh, one or two times in my life. Dude, and that's how rare it was. I even, remember. Not, okay, the, the point guards, most point guards, you know, your Michael six six, right? The smallest guy. I play I played point as a as a freshman. As I got later into high school, I sprouted up a little bit, then they moved me to power forward. I was six foot. Okay. The point guard position is normally about a Six four to six six in the NBA. Yeah, how many six six humans do you even know? Right, like I can count on one hand how many six six humans yeah. I fucking know. And to think that there's a whole league of them, well, it just shows you like that a lot of that is genetic. And that's not steroids didn't grow that six no. seven, but no. And then <laughs> yeah. you, and then you see like uh, like you, you guys ever you know I know you have both of you guys have but you meet a pro football player. I mean these guys, some of these guys are you know three hundred plus pounds. Faster and more agile Pure muscle. than anyone you know. Yeah. Like that, it just doesn't make any. It's, well, it's, it's like it's it's no joke. It's like it's like taking a human and giving them all the steroids in the world and then putting them in a cage with a gorilla, like an actual gorilla. You can have the most. You can put me on all the growth hormone and testosterone in the world, and a gorilla will shred me yeah. with one hand. Well, I think because that's just their genes. I think Justin shared the story. Uh, you know, when he worked for me years ago, we did this. I shut the gym down, the basketball court, uh, yeah. and we played. We played a five on five against the 49ers. <laughs> 
you know, and we and there was that was so eye opening. Oh yeah, you know, and Manny five Lawson, five basketball, yeah, yeah, yeah Manny, Manny Lawson, Lawson and Isaac uh, Sapawaga. Yeah, Isaac Sapawaga. He Isaac Sapawaga, I think, was weighing about three hundred and twenty or three hundred forty pounds at that time. Yeah, I had to guard him, and <laughs> I I, w- I watched him. Sucked. I watched him run up and down the court like a fucking gazelle, <laughs> jump up and dunk the basketball. Dunk. He shot it from half court and yeah. he drained it. And like the, he just had this crazy athletic ability. You're just like, what in the hell? It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> and I remember the first time he was working out next that to me. Sucks. We it was. I'll, it, I'll never forget this. And I was like, I'm on. I'm on juice at this time. I'm steroided out. I'm doing skull crushers, and I've got like. 40 pound or 45 pound dumbbells and I'm doing isolation, you know, skull crushers with it and I'm like pumping them out. He lays down right next to me. He grabs the 95s and like <laughs> pumps them out for like 20 reps doing the same movement. Easily too. Yeah, yeah. just like yeah. Huh? Huh, 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 huh. And Dude, I, I saw him do like 500 pound bench press just repping it out like, you know, 10, 15 times. I'm just like, what? That's, yeah, he's a, and he's a Samoan guy, right? So yeah. you, these, you see this and I, I used to think that it was all steroids, no. and, it's, and I don't believe that anymore. No, I just at think all. it's part of some of a lot of their protocol. Yeah. But it, but does it is it making them a pro athlete? I think it's if more you, for the guys that are on the on the fringe, right? The guy that's like just you know you're like barely your Rudy it. kind of guy, you know, <laughs> that just won't fucking let it go. Yeah. You know, like you're not like gifted like all these other guys, you yeah. know, and you just have to like, no, I can do this. Like I got skill, and you know, there's a couple of those guys that they they break through, and they just it's all heart you know, you know but they need something else so trip off this right think of the average person if physically and then think of these just freaks of nature who are these elite athletes and think of the difference physically right you got average joe schmo guy over here and then you've got like you know pro you know track and field you know whatever or or, or football player or whatever right the difference between them two the two is like two different species right yeah now do you guys think that happens intellectually do you think that there's people oh, who yeah. also make up that small? Of course. How crazy is that? Yeah. Imagine walking around. First of all, imagine walking around being that genetic anomaly physically. You you just like you could walk around like you could kill every human if you wanted to with just a you know swipe, right? Yeah. Now imagine if you're just one of those super intelligent people. How frustrating life must be to walk around uh, and be like you're all a bunch of idiots. Must suck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You're like ah. This is so think boring. about that. Well, right? you, yeah. you Isn't hear, that weird? You yeah. hear about that. You hear yeah. about some of the most brilliant people didn't finish school and were, but because they felt like it was so slow and Dude, boring to Paul, them. Paul Check is like that. Yeah, yeah. Paul Check has read. The guy constantly is learning and reading and will recite things to you and talk to you about things that'll just. Blow your yeah. absolute mind, <laughs> and I don't think he finished uh, high school. I think I can't remember his. I can't. He told his story on our show. We got to ask him when he comes in. Yeah, we will ask him. But I, I, and if he did, I, I remember him saying like he was just like whatever of a student. You know, he didn't care. I feel like that a lot of the really really brilliant minds are like that, where it's school seems so structured and small minded, and, and they there's they think so much bigger and beyond that. You know, it'd be weird to live in that body, huh? <laughs> Quick interruption by our sponsors, you guys. Lots of people have been asking us how they can support the Mind Pump Mafia family. Our first one is our Chimera Coffee that we love. You guys go to ChimeraCoffee.com. That's Chimera with a K for 10% off. Don't forget Mind Pump at the checkout. We also have our Big Top Beard Company.com for 33% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. Checkout. Also, Brain FM. We talk so much about this for sleep and meditation. It's Brain.fm for 20% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. You guys, we also talk a lot about books on here all the time. We're using that Audible. You guys can get a free trial, 30-day trial, plus one free audio book if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump. And then last, we get lots of people asking about Ben Greenfield's CBD supplement, so we hit him up to hook you guys up. You go to getnaturedblend.com forward slash mind pump for that discount. Young Chillionaire 55, what are the books you would tell your 21-year-old self to read? Uh, God, when are you guys going to have to go for I got to think about this. I can't, I 20, can't really think of a book. That- I'm trying to think. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you some of the uh, for sure ones that were big books for me. That It's not even a big book. So one of the shortest, best reads I've ever read, I think I've said this on the show at least two or three times before over the last couple of years, uh, One Minute Manager. Uh, if you're in leadership, uh, and, and so that's why talking to my 21 year self, uh, I was 20 years old 
uh, when I was put into a leadership role. So I was already managing people that were all older than me at 20. So at 21, I would, and I think it was until about 25 or 26 when I read this book, it was a game changer for me. One minute manager uh, changed completely my leading style. Uh, another uh, great read uh, for that age was uh, 360 Leader by John C. Maxwell. That was in uh, the, the idea that is like being in a company where you are a leader or in management yourself and you have people above you and below you and you're the people above you you don't see as maybe the most intelligent or great leaders. And how do you work? How do you work around that? You know, so I thought that was uh, those two right away come to mind as uh, big ones. And then. God, what's another one that I would have told my that was major for me later on? Maybe Jack Welch is winning. Oh yeah. Um, you know, being a lot of my uh, forward and outspoken comes from that, like being candid. Oh, you know what? Actually, I take that back. An even better book was First Break All the Rules. Uh, this was a great book for me because I felt like when I w was working for a company, they were giving me all these rules and regulations and structure. And, you know, I always felt like ah, I just I've always been the type of person to challenge authority and think outside the box. And, you know, sometimes you can get in a company and they, they can crush a spirit like that because they can make you feel like you have to conform to their way. Uh, in order to be successful. And I remember at that age, I was really struggling with that. I was struggling with my gut and what my gut told me inside with what my bosses and people were telling me on the outside. So mm -hmm. first break all the rules, uh, 360 leader and um, one minute manager. We, we have that in common, that whole uh, hating to conform. In yeah. fact, I think both you and I were both uh, somewhat a black sheeps <laughs> at 24 Hour Fitness, 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, I was known as being the guy that everybody was afraid to promote. Uh, because I might it's do, part some, of where do something crazy. My first uh, business name where we love to hate Adam stem from. So it was that was said a lot to me. <laughs> so I stuck well, with it. <laughs> dude, I literally I literally told our divisional president uh, to go fuck himself. I, and I, I, said, I called him a derogatory term because he was overweight, which is weird to me that you man it. You're you're president of a fitness organization and you're obese. And you're a dickhead. So. so I thought about reaching out to Don. <laughs> Thanks or, for calling his name. Out. <laughs> that's, great. that's great. Or let's be, let's bleep that out. Please. I just, hey, I just, I just thought that might be who it was. He's a nice guy now. And uh, you know? Ben Randall, who was my boss, and yeah. I thought they would make for great interviews to actually want. So I thought I would sit out and let wow. you guys interview him, or maybe you sat out and we got to interview him and ask about you. I think they would be a unique interview. To ask about me? <laughs> yeah. <No. Yeah. laughs> you know, I got. I, he called me one. I've got. I got on the phone. See. When you, if you were a manager of a club, you rarely ever talk to the divisional president unless you were, you know, doing something really crazy, either good or bad. Like then you'd get a phone call or whatever. And I got a couple phone calls. One time I got a phone call because we got a ticket from the Sunnyvale Fire Department because I had got I had my sales guys do <coughs> balloon arches on all of the street lamps all the way up and down uh, Fremont Boulevard and Sunnyvale Saratoga Road, which, so what we would do is we'd tie them kind of loose and let them float up. So they're they're way up in this, we, we blew up like four tanks of helium to do this. And uh, the balloons were like blowing into the street, you know, it's causing traffic and shit. And fire department comes and tells me to take them down. And I said, I'm not going to, I can't, I don't know how to get up there. So they wrote us a big <laughs> ticket and uh, I got a call from him. And he was so angry. And I said, yeah, well, how much is a ticket? I said, subtract it from my total today because I just crushed all the other clubs. I was a total <laughs> cocky dickhead when I'd get on the phone with some of these guys. So um, so here's a good business book that I read that I think would have been great if I had read this when I was 21. It's from it's by Jim Collins called Good to Great. And oh, good book. one of the one thing that stuck out <clears throat> to me from that book was uh, he talked about uh, – using uh, windows and mirrors was the term he used windows and mirrors so he talked about how good companies perform and how great companies perform and the difference is, is windows and mirrors and what great companies do or what great leaders do is when something goes wrong they look in the mirror when uh, leaders who aren't as good what they do is they look out the window and look and try and blame other people so a great leader looks in the mirror now when things are going right a great leader looks out the window at his team. What's my team doing? Or why are we doing so great? Where a less good leader 
would look out would would look in the mirror at themselves and, and and you know take all the credit. So I thought that was fascinating, um, and I had remembered working for some incredible leaders, and that's how they were. Like when things went wrong, it was like, okay, what can I do as a leader to do better? When things were great, they gave us all the credit. And uh, from a leadership point of view, it was very very motivating uh, to work for people like that. Um, a couple other books that really uh, instrumental for me in terms of you know my thought process. Uh, they're not fitness. This is not a fitness book. Uh, it's it's really uh, it's a it's a book written by an economist, uh, Milton Friedman. Uh, I don't hide the fact that I'm a big fan of Milton Friedman, and I learned quite a bit from actually YouTube, watching some of his videos. He had this series that he recorded, and I believe it was in 1980 that he recorded, and it was uh, uh, God. What was the name of the series? Uh, it was called uh, Free to Choose. And it was a brilliant series because Milton Friedman, very, very smart man, uh, he puts things, he, the way he talks about things, he explains things in ways that are very easy to understand. He's like the Carl Sagan of the economy world. Like Carl Sagan, as a physicist, was very smart. He wasn't the most brilliant physicist in the world. He wasn't breakthrough or anything. But the Carl way he, Sa- the way he explained it. The way it, he explained it. Yeah. He, he was able to communicate uh, to the average person and make quite an impact. And Milton Friedman did that very well in some of his talks and stuff that he did throughout the 70s uh, and early 80s. And he wrote a book called Free to Choose and another book called Capitalism and Freedom. And it really helped me understand how uh, economics really is the, uh, that's really the, fu- the, the, the driver of peace worldwide is through economics. You know, there's lots of philosophies of how we can become more peaceful as a society, but economics uh, from a uh, you know f- uh, uh, from a standpoint of what is uh, you know actually going to work, uh, what's realistic is the is is the most powerful. And um, I learned quite a bit from reading that. I also read uh, a book by Ayn Rand, um, The Fountainhead, um, was really was and Atlas Shrugged. Now I'm not a huge Ayn Rand fan herself, but the books themselves are really fascinating, and it helped me understand. Uh, how sometimes as a society we put we place a lot of blame on certain people who are actually doing things that we're benefiting greatly from, and you know certain these a lot of these people aren't perfect, of course, but a lot of the times we blame uh, the producers of of great things, the people who create and produce and risk, and because they're the producers and the creators. We also look at them and blame them many times for a lot of great things. When in reality, we don't look, you know, it's it's like we don't look at ourselves. And I remember uh, having a conversation a lot uh, one time with somebody who was talking about how uh, they were blaming um, retail companies for a lot of the problems in society. And they were saying, "Hey, look, man, like, uh, look at all these liquor stores that they put in these bad neighborhoods. Like, they're just perpetuating this bad situation." And I remember after reading some of these books, thinking. Well, all we have to do is stop buying their products. You know, you know, we talk about the supplement industry all the time and how shitty they are and how they advertise and the stuff they promote. But at the end of the day, they wouldn't exist if we didn't buy their products. Yep. And the power is in our hands. And uh, you know, learning, reading about economics and reading some of these books uh, helped me understand uh, really how powerful I was as a consumer. And it's a, it's an empowering feeling. It was really good to understand that and know that the most. Uh, impactful thing I can do in my everyday choices is decide where I put my money. That's right. Mm-hmm. Vote with your dollar. Vote and, and, yeah. and that's really, and it's, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to do, right? Because nobody wants to take responsibility for the shit that they see. Like they want to blame the cigarette company, but they don't want to blame themselves for buying the cigarettes. Yeah. They want to blame McDonald's, but they don't want to blame themselves for giving McDonald's money. Um, it's empowering, but with that empowerment comes responsibility. And uh, it was a it was a paradi- paradigm shattering moment for me to realize that. Yeah, I think for me, I'm thinking about like some books that impacted me, especially after college, because for the most part, I was just reading textbooks for every different subject. From Winnie, Winnie, Winnie the Pooh goes to town. <laughs> yeah, Winnie the Pooh <laughs> and, and, and Doctor Seuss. Those are my go-to. Hey, Doctor Seuss is one of the greatest philosophers of all time. Right? Actually, yeah, he's legit. Fuck I, yeah, I still read that to my kids, and Fuck it, yeah. it's like, oh, I love that stuff. Yeah. Anyways, like um, the E Myth and the E Myth Revisited by Mar- uh, Michael Gerber was um, really impactful for me as an entrepreneur because you know you don't learn that kind of stuff in school, and uh, for me to to be able to assess 
um, you know, how to create a business and how to not just work on your business, like work inside your business and be a technician, but to work outside of your business and, and think about, you know, how to kind of pull myself out and really assess how everything is, is, is interacting and working and like how I can improve things from, from the exterior, not just like being so day to day involved, like today I'm doing this and like, this is how I'm going to get clients. And my whole focus was just like, I just need to get clients and train them and service them. And it really helped me to kind of pull outside of that a little bit more and, and think more on the growth of the actual business and, and, um, how I could sort of replace myself, uh, within that. So, um, also to, uh, the lean startup is another one just, um, really, really helped me to kind of assess like where to, where to uh, manage, um, better, like how to, how to put, put like, like, like not just buy all the bells and whistles right away, you know, like really think about, um, you know, what, what is, what you can operate with currently and, and squeeze that for as long as you can. Because, um, if anybody knows anything about business, the longer you're in the business, if you, you know, what, what kills businesses is cash every single time. Mm. And if you don't manage that properly and, and you just, you just like want to want to have everything already from the go, or you want to get this huge loan, um, you're, you're putting yourself in a hole that you're going to have to dig yourself out of like, and, uh, so anyway, there's a lot of strategies in there that, um, made a lot of sense and, uh, got me thinking a little bit more how to be efficient, uh, in, in, you know, like structuring everything and how to spend my money appropriately. Um, and, uh, the rest of them are pretty much, <laughs> well, as far as training goes, like super training is a great book for me, uh, with Mel Sif. Mm. Um, and that, that got me really introduced more into the, um, which we ignored a lot because the Soviet union, like how, how they, I mean, they dominated like all these strength sports, uh, and they did it with science and they really like, they did all these really interesting studies that, we didn't adopt till later on here. And so they, they go after we got the shit kicked out of us. You just got (laughs) our ass handed to us. Well, they invested, people don't realize this, the Soviet union as a, as a nation invested lots and because it was a source of national pride and you know, the Olympics was used and it still is today, but especially back then when you had the, the cold war, right? You had communism versus capitalism Yeah, and the Soviet union, Really viewed the Olympics as a way to display their superior, you know, uh, you ways know, of leading, ways of you know living, mm-hmm. right? Their government and uh, their philosophy of communism, and they invested a shit ton of money in their strength athletes, and a lot of the science of their training is fascinating. It's brilliant. It's I, fascinating. And they and they actually tested all these different theories, like you know, anywhere from. I mean, this is where I got back into isometric training and. Uh, Lots of these different like uh, modalities that you're kind of like, wow, they're, I, you know, I knew it was effective, but why, you know, mm-hmm. and they actually tested these things out. And um, so anyway, that's, I mean, it's a pretty, <laughs> it's not like an easy read or anything, but it's something I'm always referencing constantly because there's so much, there's a wealth of information in there to, to extract, especially if you're a trainer. So um, so definitely that. And then the rest of them are pretty much like tripod and all the, the like excess, like star Wars, uh, books just because I, I can't help it, man. I love sci-fi and I love to, uh, <laughs> think about, yeah, but you wouldn't have to tell your 21 year old aliens in the universe and all that. No, I wouldn't You're have probably to say that. that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was already into that. So yeah. So mainly I guess those other books I mentioned. All right. This question is from Kitoy German volume training. Packs on mass, they say, right or wrong? So GVT, German Volume Training. So this was a training technique used by the Eastern Germans, the the communist Eastern Germans, uh, for putting on uh, muscle uh, mass and size on their weightlifters. And we learned about this, of course, after the Berlin, after the wall fell. And uh, by the way, uh, communism lost, uh, just in case you got some people who are like, oh, communism was more effective because their weightlifters were better. No, they lost and their, their coaches came over here and now we're the strongest. So there. Boom. Uh, but yeah, they, uh, what, they, what German volume training was, was they would take an exercise, a movement like squats, and you would pick a rep range, let's say 10 reps, 
and you would keep the weight the same and you would do 10 sets. Okay. It's basically, that's all it is. So you do 10 sets of an exercise. Uh, you have a particular rest period in between each set. And the goal is to hit the same number of reps each time. So you got to be very careful with the weight you choose. Now, some interesting things happen with German volume training, and I'll tell you why it actually does work um, in some ways. When you adopt this type of training, or when you start to utilize uh, this particular technique, what you'll find, let's say you do squats for 10 sets of 10 reps, is that the squats will get more difficult and more difficult and more difficult until you hit like set number four or five, and then all of a sudden you get stronger. It's really weird. All of a sudden, you feel stronger, and then you get fatigued again towards the end. And uh, it's always trips people out when they do this. It, it doesn't happen to everybody, but most of you who are, you know, have uh, who are pretty fit, you'll notice this when you do this. And of course, you don't want to pick a weight that's too heavy. You're not going to go ten reps to failure each time because there's no way you'll be able to do this. You want to pick a weight that's you can do pretty well with a moderate amount of intensity. But you'll find after about five rep sets, you feel stronger and more solid in your lifts. What you're noticing is central nervous system adaptation right then and there, hmm. right in be in in the middle of these sets your central nervous system starts to adapt and starts to put out uh, more strength. Now, the reason why this is an effective training tool, and it's a short-term one, it's not one that's always effective, is simply for that reason right there. It really trains your central nervous system in a specific way. Because you're just doing squats or you're just doing deadlifts or you're just doing bench press, you're practicing it and you're getting really good at recruitment patterns and firing Within that particular workout, what's the what's the frequency protocol with it? Is it once a week, twice a week? So the Germans actually did it differently than bodybuilders. Bodybuilders now will do this, and they'll be it'll they'll do their body part split with it. So okay. if today's chest, then I'm going to do you know ten sets of bench press, and that's my workout, yeah. and then I'll do it again. So I've week. actually followed this protocol before, so I'm curious to like exactly how the frequency. Well, works. they would have pretty frequent because they were weightlifters, and weightlifters lifted very frequently. Yeah. So they would do this, and they'd probably do this two or three day two or three days a week. Uh, with a particular exercise. Um, some people have done this every single day. Of course, you got to be careful with the intensity and the weight that you use. <clears throat> but if you do this right, uh, and if it's different enough, you'll see gains definitely from it. Well, it's a lot of volume. I yeah. mean, that's and that's uh, hence the name, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, so I think a lot of people will see, and I think it's, volume is one of the the biggest ways that you can show. It's like one of the ways I, it's a, as a trainer, I use this as like a magic trick, you know, or you, you <laughs> clients, and I say that because clients think it's like this magical thing that you do, but it's really, Kazam! but it's actually really simple. If I take some, it's the same approach that I do when I take a, a client that, and I'm assessing their nutrition and I tell them to just eat how you would normally eat, show me what you're doing. And then from there I'm adjusted. So if I really want to impress somebody and show them like instant change in their physique or gains, I'll have them do the same thing with resistance as I'll, I'll, you know, write your work, work out how you've always worked out, show me what your week looks like. And then all I have to do, and I want them to track their sets, their reps and their weight. And then once they present that to me, I'll sit down, put it all in a calculator and I'll mathematically break down the volume per muscle. So I'll look at the legs and I'll say, okay, they've done a total of, you know, 25,000 pounds of volume in a week. And I know that if I take them to 30,000 pounds of volume in a week, the next week, they're going to see a difference. They're going to see a difference in strength. They'll see a difference in, and so volume is the biggest game changer that will show people this, the growth in, in, in muscle size and in strength. So if you're somebody who trains a basic body part split or you normally do three to five sets of exercises and all of a sudden somebody hits you with 10 sets of squats, like the, your volume is going to increase so much that, yeah, and when your body adapts to that volume, you're going to see some major growth and gains. I think... But there's a difference too between like just doing 10 sets of legs and you're doing, let's say, you know, three different exercises and then doing 10 sets of the same exercise. There's this very interesting, like you get the CNS habit adaptation. That's it's quite fascinating. Well, it, I've done this before. And it's really the, weird. That's the the said principle, right? Yeah. It's a it's it's a specific adaptation, exactly, right? Yeah. So, you know, that's what what's happening with that. And so, ten sets of, I mean, that's why. 
you know, when when we break down different types of training modalities like, you know, GBT, I didn't, I didn't even know that this is the protocol to it. It's really the the manipulation of volume and, and frequency are like the two biggest things that people will see. And I think learning as a as a person who's working out at the gym is understanding that is understanding that, you know, it wasn't this magical program that made my body change. It's that, whoa, look at this. I totally changed uh, my volume or like, well, you know, and that's I'll tell you part of the magic behind maps and why we know it, it just blows everybody's mind away is because we know that most people don't really utilize the frequency concept. Most people are getting this information from bodybuilders and are told, you know, you hammer one body part per week, maybe twice a week you hit it. Then all of a sudden maps comes along, along and we teach you guys that, listen, stop training to failure, back off of that, increase your frequency. And we know damn well that's naturally going to not only promote more muscle growth because of the frequency and the muscle building signal that you're sending, that we also know you're probably going to naturally increase volume because when you go to hit squats or a major compound lift, three times in a week you didn't fry yourself from 10 to 15 sets of it the day two days before we know that you're going to be able to increase your weight and your volume so you know it's even maps it's not we don't say it's magical we just understand the general population and how they train and we're giving people the tools that actually really will change your body and your physique and that's the real magic well, if you're it. doing that many reps and sets you know in one specific thing your body gets really good at that, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just like practice and, and your body's going to respond at a high level when that's the focus and you're not overpowering it with all this load and you're frying yourself with it. You're, it's just like practice. You're just like continually repetitiously going through this. It's, uh, here's some, some drawbacks. So it's, it's, it's actually quite effective in the short term, this type of philosophy. You will get stronger. You will build muscle. You'll adapt quickly. You'll adapt quickly. And uh, overuse injuries are very common with mm, this mm-hmm. because you're doing the same thing over and over again. You'll notice you, you might start getting problems in, in your joints. So uh, if you do utilize German volume training, do so for short periods of time. You know, I would do it no longer than three, four weeks at the most. And then back out of it. Uh, otherwise, you will find yourself uh, causing some, yourself some problems. Next question is from Fit OG Fry. You just got your own bat cave. What do you put in it? <laughs> bat cave. Na, 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 I'll talk na, about the, yeah. Let's talk about the gym I'd put in it. No, see that's okay. <laughs> hey, you go that way because I I right away I'm like I'm not putting a fucking gym Bro, in my you're, back. Here. You're a fucking super. I already have I already have that. Our gym is built the way I'd want it, man. Like we have the toy. Like I couldn't be happier with. Batman is like a billionaire. You can put like all this like cool electric electronics. That's where I'm at, bro. Latest gear. I've got a hundred. I got a hundred like hundred inch fucking yeah. HD TV. I'm getting one of those suits that like like make you invisible. So <laughs> I can like, just you want. Shit that doesn't exist, yeah. basically. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I don't know. I want my I want my bad caved. I'm I am I'm like Justin. I'm into uh, tech and new toys, and I, I love. I'm a movie buff guy, so I would actually build a pretty fucking sick like you know underground movie theater experience because I I enjoy mm. watching movies so much that I would want my bad cave to have that. Maybe a couple of my arcade games uh, mm. inside there. Uh, maybe make sure it's about a fifteen tall 15 Dude. foot tall ceiling so i can put a little half court basketball yeah. court in there i'm doing that but you you know those like indoor uh like skydiving things you know like yeah, yeah. oh yeah that's cool like to get one of those that's cool yeah and i'm just like floating around you that's know that's really cool rock climbing walls would be yeah cool. exactly i would lo- i would have of course i'd have the sickest gym of all time but then i'd have this like amazing spa in there as well with you know jacuzzi and steam okay, room I like and that. sauna i like that and cold you know freezing cold dip Oh, um, yeah. I you know I'd have like the latest stuff. I would want you know what kind of steam room I'd want. I want a steam room with a TV in it that doesn't get fogged up. Oh, that'd be dope. You know how yeah. sick that would be. That yeah, would be dope. You're just chilling there. And just yeah. See, okay. I like where you're going now. Mm. Like so, the, I would like stuff like I would like I would like a place to me that would be this ultimate relax like the things that i love to do to like calm me down which watching movies is there steam i love the hot cold dip concept that's a brilliant idea badass tv which i could watch from my steam room i think would be awesome Mm -hmm. uh you know some sort of a like you know massage type chair or table let me ask you i want a butler yeah. Yeah. Do you really? Yeah. Oh, we yeah. could, we could, yeah, yeah. Uh, like a hologram. One. I mean, it is a Batman cave. We yeah. got it. We He's should have. A, out of this what's thing. his name? Okay, well, hey, that, Jeeves. Okay, yeah. that's that's a good. I would give have, me a beer. I would have a specialist come in, test me for everything: food intolerances, hormones, the whole deal, and then prepare my meals 
every day based on my new measurements every single day. So I'd eat my it like food. like scans you. Like today your diet's going to be comprised of largely saturated fats because we noticed blah, 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 blah. Or today we're going to give you some more starches because this went down yeah. and that went up. You just and contracted I'd just be, HIV. I'd be, I'd be, oh, what? shit. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'd be, herpes. But. I'd, be, I'd be optimized all the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> so what let me ask you this. Would you guys rather have a super ridiculous expensive inside of your house or a small, you know, nice little pleasant home with a lot of land that you could do shit with. Which one do you would you rather have? Oh, dude, mm. that's a that's a tough one. And I and I y- you know, having all the land and the outside and the sunshine and the fresh air and all that sounds really cool. Like I'd really love yeah, to have like land. Dude. But yeah. I, but I got to be honest, like uh, I've told Katrina this a million oh, times like line course. when we build our custom home I will have a master bedroom that is literally like a vault. Like yeah. air won't be able to, only like filtrated cool air will get in because of my allergies. <laughs> and I just want to be able to breathe and I want to have this like complete dust free room. Yeah. So I want, you like yeah, you're boy. total, like, yeah, I do. I do want like yeah. the bubble boy type of a, a room. So as much as I appreciate outside, it looks better for me looking from a window than it actually is oh, being out there because, because and I, and I, of course this is close to close to home for me right now because the last two weeks of allergies has been fucking insane. You know that one house that's that's a, I don't know if it's Lake Tahoe but like there used to be like one of the gangsters owned it where they had like this secret um, bottom half of the house where they could like escape uh, with a boat and they just get on the lake and like, oh, take yeah, off yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. I want like secret compartments, you know what I mean, like that, and then like I could go on a lake, or then I I just zip line the fuck out of there, you know. <laughs> what do you get? Argument in case with, the feds come you, after me. You get an argument with your wife. Yeah, <laughs> I'm out of here. Oh, zip, I'm out of here. Zip lines. Yeah, go hang out my Ewok. No, village. I'd love to have like a creek that I could like put my feet in. Mm. I'd love to have like you know grassy hills that I could like pull sleds up, and you know I'd love to be able to hike on my own property and just and meditate and i'd love to have like a tree area with design for meditation i don't know i'd mm. like that I, I i'm not too much i'm not too excited about like a crazy big internal part of the house i want a nice comfortable house but i'd rather have something like where i, where I go outside and there's like a big buddha statue with like waterfalls and shit and you know that kind of stuff you know what i'm saying mm, peaceful yeah. exactly yeah. i like it I like check it out uh go to mindpumpmedia.com 30 days of coaching is still available, and guess what? It's still for free. Also, if you want us to answer one of your questions, like the ones we just answered right now, you got to go to Instagram, uh, Mind Pump Media. That's where you'll find us. Look for the Qua uh, posts and Make ask sure your you question. Hashtag that. Make sure you hashtag Qua, Q-U-A-H, and uh, if we like your question, we will answer it on air. You can also find our individual Instagram pages. Mine is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. And Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.